Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Immortality where I did it, I did, I remembered to do the thing I said, I have my notes, I have a pen, I, I have made some rudimentary notes, and I'm totally not going to forget things or get confused about anything ever again. So, I had been pursuing a strategy of like, let's try to figure out what happened to Carl Greenwood by just clicking on his face over and over again and hoping that there's footage of, of whatever it was, but you know what? We're going to keep getting scenes from the film if we keep clicking Carl Greenwood. I think what we should try to do now is click on, um, looks at notes, uh, John Durek. Click on the director because I don't necessarily want footage from inside the films, but like if something dramatic happens on set, surely he'll like be, he'll run in frame or something. This is my thought. This is, this is, this is where I want to lead for, uh, for now. So... Let's just grab a piece of footage that has his... Oh, damn it. Uh, how do I... Here. No, stop. Stop. Play, stop playing. Okay, so if you do the frame... If you hold the, the shift modifier and press the frame backward button, it just keeps going. It doesn't, it doesn't just do it the number of times you clicked. Good to know, I guess. Nope, hold on. This, yeah, this seems like it's probably not part of the film, huh? Do you love it? It's my natural color. I like it. I love it. Too much hair is like you're dragging your past around with you. When I look at someone, I like to see their skull. It's fucking weird. You're weird. I will now interview the hot new director, John Durek. Hi. John, what is your process? How do you visualize a movie before you shoot? Mm, trying to visualize less, actually. I want to set up the ideas and characters and then shoot them like a documentary. I want to capture something alive, you know? Now we can shoot on location, we can shoot for here. You sleep with all your actresses? His rule, yes. An artist should be familiar with his material. Well, then you should fuck Carl, too. <laughs> Otherwise, you're as bad as Minsky. We all know what happens to Minsky. Okay. Enough with the camera. <laughs> Jealous. <laughs> <laughs> you know why they call him Drella? Mm. Dracula and Cinderella. Isn't that perfect? <laughs> hmm. You know why they call him Drella? Who is she referring to there? It's not Carl, is it? Uh, maybe it's Carl. Um, okay, wind it back a little bit. Uh, give me... Nope, shoot. Sorry, click. Give me more of this. <clears throat> Scene 33B, take one. You ready, Thomas? Keep it loose. Let Marissa lead you. Action. You are nothing without me. You will always be a footnote in my biography. You didn't create me. Mm, this doesn't feel right. Uh, keep rolling. It's, uh... It's not just an argument, right? It's, uh... Let's take it to the bed. It's foreplay. It's, uh... The wrestling match. Yeah, I love it. Gonna go for it. Keep up. Okay. You ready? Mm -hmm. You are nothing without me. 
You will always be a footnote in my biography. You didn't create me. Yes, I did. I found you and I made you what you are. There are millions of pretty girls and I made you singular. You are as much a creation of Minsky as all these paintings. <laughs> Without me, you cannot paint. Mm. I believe you. And I will sell my own paintings. And I will forget you and you will be alone. A model who paints is amusing. Like a dog who walks on two legs. People will find you amusing for a while. It is impossible for you to be an artist. I will kill you. You lack the masculine power for that kind of violence. Let's fuck, and tomorrow you can apologize. Tomorrow I will kill you. Hey, cut! <laughs> Fuck Douglas Simon! <laughs> Fuck Douglas Simon! <laughs> Yeah, fuck Douglas Simons. I don't know who that is. Um, okay, so hold on. I want to back up out of this. That was scene 33B. I want to make a note of all the scenes where we get that weird, like, I don't know what it is, foghorn noise? So last time we heard it, to interrupt the flow of what we're doing here a little bit, last time we heard it, it remained playing when we paused the film during a part where it was occurring, right? Let's wind this back. I should probably make a note of that also. Who the fuck is Douglas Simons? That is not one of the names on my list. I managed to get a couple of names that uh, we haven't heard yet in the game as well because I made notes um, from the posters for the movies, which are on the Steam store page. So there's a couple of names that are connected to the, um, the third movie. The 1999 movie that we haven't had a chance to um, to encounter yet. I'm very curious about those. Uh, anyway. Yeah, keep winding this back. Where was it? Nope, there it was. Without... Interesting. Nothing in this scene registers to the eye at all. Not even her face. So yeah, as long as we're like in the moment, this sound keeps playing. What on earth? If I... I'm trying to go to the point where it ends. I just want to see if there's like... All right, take us back the other way. Whoa, um. whoa, 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 whoa. Um. I thought you wanted to be with me. It's strange. I should have you scared of me. This isn't the reaction that I wanted. Oh, he told me you were disappointed. He's dead. I was trying to help you. I made this movie for you. For yourself.
Okay, so... <laughs> I have some questions, I guess. Uh, like, frantically making notes over here. The other one, about which is said he's dead, perhaps? Um, I'm not 100% sure what happened. Maybe we should try playing all of the other sequences. Uh, sh fuck, the thing is, I don't remember where they were. Okay, I remember the, the, bloody, the bloody dress in the chapel was one of them. Maybe when we hear that sound, if we play the footage backwards... It's, I mean, it's not backmasking, right? The thing that that, the thing that, oops, we found a spooky thing by playing the footage backwards immediately calls to mind is the, you know, the satanic lyrics backmasking record scandal. Um, but this is not that. This is we found a completely different footage. Will this, will this play from the, this button has no effect. Okay, thought you wanted to be with me. So this is about where we came in. It won't go back any further. So the clip starts in the moment of the sound playing. Or, or just before it, maybe. Can we, who is this? It matched us to Marissa. Okay. Hmm. Let's go ahead and watch whatever this is. Hi. Um, let's go ahead and watch whatever this is, and then we're going to try some stuff. She seems like a nightmare to work with, <laughs> frankly. I don't that's not what this clip was trying to get across, but Okay. Um oops, not what I wanted. This. So, hold on. Is that a thing we should definitely check is is that footage No, that footage of John being strangled to death would be right around here. So the clip that we saw by reversing into the sound in this clip does not get its own posting. What if I filter to stuff just from this movie? No. No, it's just as though it was not even a thing that happened. And I mean, it isn't a thing that happened, right? But we saw something. I guess, like, what well, my question, I suppose, really is, what is it that we saw because John Durick's death was part of it, and he's like very much alive after that happened. So did we... 
did we see the film somehow capturing a fantasy or a dream or hmm all right this scene i know for sure uh i know for sure that sound was in there's a couple more and i don't exactly remember was it it might have been in this scene too let's let's hit here first Antonio, the virgin what? Hold on, this is not the beginning of the scene, though. 56 Charlie, take five. All right, Ambrosio from God Has Compelled will walk us up here in After Pleasures of the Flesh. And action. God has compelled me to follow in St. Clair's example. I, too, have shunned society and devoted myself to prayer. Into a pure life that brings me closer to God. Oops, sorry. I, didn't, I did not mean to click. Let's show that this devotion has power, that it can manifest in the world. Seriously is an act that lifts those around us. It was around here, right? When she comes in. We shun the rewards of a corporal life. We shun the cheap pleasures of the flesh. We bask in the love of God. Okay, so we go past it, and then we reverse through it. Nope, I'm going the wrong way. Nope, I... How did I do it last time? Shoot, I might have to... I might have to go watch back the footage of this. Okay, so... Let's get to the noise and then I guess just like maybe I hate to say it this way but maybe sort of like wiggle the tape around inside of this area the door is like wiggly this is probably we shun the rewards of a court Okay, so we just play the whole thing backwards. Okay. All right, yeah, so just like normal speed backwards through the sound, I guess. Don't love that, actually. That's not my favorite thing that's ever happened. Um, okay, that is for real the end of the clip. So that's that's Marissa beneath her now, right? She came in with the other girl, but... Right? Am I reading that correctly? Like That's definitely... Yeah. But yeah, but she came in with the other girl. And Marissa speaks to her in French. I'm trying to figure out, like, could this possibly have been a scene in the film? It, it doesn't seem like, given that it's magically encoded into a different, you know, it doesn't seem like it would be a scene in the film, but I don't. Damned if I can tell you what it is. And if I face match on her, it's going to put us back on, back on Marissa, right? Yeah. Okay. I think you're all wonderful. I 
This is a screen test for Minsky. When I call up your name, just tell us about yourself, and we will see if the camera lets you. Susie? Hi, I'm Susie. I am a wholesome country girl who came to New York City to make it big. However, I fell in with a bunch of degenerate artists and shusters. They told me I was going to be a star, but they only play my pictures at Times Square movie theaters. Don't give me that look, Drella. I think this could be my big break. I intend to steal the movie. Eddie? I'm Eddie, and I'm told I'm photogenic on account of my big, brown eyes. I'm excited to meet Douglas Simon. Seeing him in a loincloth fighting gladiators was a big artistic influence on me growing up. And I'm Debbie. <laughs> you didn't wait your turn. I thought you were done. You're, you're done. Debbie, tell us about yourself. Um, well, I'm from a very well-to-do family back in France. Was it part of the Ancien Regime? Ah, my family has won the social level after the guillotine. I moved to New York City with my brother after I was kicked out of school for trying to put on a play about the Jesus fucking Mary Magdalene. I make a lot of religious art, mostly centered on the body. I figure. If God is anywhere, he isn't here. Is this a religious movie? No, that was the last one. Where you played the devil. Where I played the devil. Oh, <laughs> now that is a hell I can get behind. <laughs> I think you're all wonderful. God is going to love you. Okay, so Drella is someone behind the camera on Minsky. Probably probably some some crew. And they mentioned Douglas Simons here. Or, or Eddie mentioned Douglas Simons. So it's the, he, like he was excited to get to work with him. So maybe Douglas Simons is somebody who was supposed to be in the movie and he like bailed on the production or something. Also, I gotta say, look at Eddie... I feel like he'd make a pretty good God Emperor of Dune, you know? Okay. Um, couple things. Couple things for my notes. This is scene 56C in Ambrosia. Just, just making notes. I guess I could, like, favorite mark all of these ones. Whatever. I'm just going to keep writing it in my, in my notes for right now. Ambrosio 56C. I think it was in this scene, too, wasn't it? Fifty-one apples. Take one. Action. Right at the beginning, in fact. Father. All right. Ambrosio, fifty-one apple. There we go. Don't don't like it. I just don't like it. Is the thing. She is way too aware of me. Robert Jones. That could be the name of that guy who is playing. We don't, I don't actually know that. Um, let's just make a note. Don't really have like full cast lists for the movies or anything. Uh, if we were actually in the world where all of this has taken place, that's shit we could definitely look up. Even though these movies never came out. Like if there was enough known about them for there to be, you know, late night, TV show interviews and stuff. We definitely heard the sound one more time. Don't, yeah. Yeah. Father. 
okay, it puts us back in here. And if I zoom out from this version, it will remember the... Yeah, it's interesting that it blacks out. Huh. Oh, it was in here after they cut, wasn't it? I'm really glad that I'm doing this. I'm recording this, like, the same day, only a matter of hours after the last one, because I would... I would forget this stuff. You tamed fire, and then found a way to make it a pleasure. So much. It's so good. You tamed fire and then found a way to make it a pleasure. Almost, it almost feels to me like that's from something. Like she's quoting dialogue of something else. I don't know, it's, it's pulling it, it's pulling it at the corner of my brain. I can't tell you what it would have been necessarily. So there's not going to be anything else here other than what we just saw, right? Yeah, okay. All right, well, that's Minsky 4B. just so that we can find them again later after I have forgotten, which is going to happen probably soon. Well, that's very curious indeed. <laughs> I really have no idea what to make of that. I'm going to, okay, I'm going to tab out for a second. I'm going to tab out for a second. Y'all won't be able to see this, um, but I am going to look up that line. I'm going to learn how to spell the word tamed. And we're just going to see if that is a thing. I can't tell you what it would be from. No, it doesn't look like... Hmm. No, I don't think so. It doesn't look like it's uh, there's no there's no results in the Google search that look like anything of value. Well, shit. All right, I guess back to the back to the John Durick plan for the moment. Okay, this one we saw. So does that mean that we've seen all the clips with him? Or are we just looping? Frankie Santoros. No, okay, this is new. Right, scene 14, Marissa reading for Susie's part. We cut the interrogation room, pieces of photocopy diary, pages stuck to the wall behind Goodman. Frankie Santora. Goodman's waiting for an answer. Opposite him. She's pretending to think about the question. Frankie could be a woman's name or something else. <laughs> a lot of people come and go in our crowd, but I don't remember a Santora. What kind of people? People who work in the arts. Painters, sculptors, models, murderers. Minsky ever get into anything with anyone at the warehouse? Minsky didn't come in that often. He looked down on us. He even told Franny to stop coming by. He took her under his wing when she was 17 and didn't want us expanding her horizons too much. <laughs> Franny expanded her own horizons plenty. She was already painting before she met him. Minsky ever... Franny ever mention uh, Frankie? Centora? I told you I never heard that name before. But everyone has more than one name. I wasn't born Holly Honey, you know. Frankie Santora sounds like a drag act or a gangster. Maybe you should try Club 88. Plenty of both there. And cut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> the real 
Susie will be far worse. I'm just warming you up. Okay, you know what I want to do? Uh, now that we have names for those people, or at least first names for those people, I want to go back to that scene, this. Because uh, Durek says their character names in this. I just think it would be a good idea for, for that stuff to be written down here. I remember one of them has a really, like a really ridiculous name. There it is. Lottie Hole. That's what I was remembering. I don't mean to say ridiculous because like it's a power move. If you can get away with being called Lottie Hole, that lets people know that you are in charge of your shit. And as a person who selected a name for her new self, her new life that uh, is <laughs> perhaps ridiculous, perhaps what some people might say, uh, I guess I got no room to talk. Okay, but so we know Susie was playing Holly Honey, so Eddie's Billy Banner, Debbie's Lottie Hole. I don't know, just feels like it might be useful. Uh, does the footage ever clearly show Durek? I'm basically just looking for a way to click through to him and be very lazy about it. When they swing back. No. He's, he's like in this part of the frame. Okay. Uh, once again, let's just, let's just click on his, his face a couple more times here. Sergeant, clear the hell out of here. Is that understood? I want no more than three cops in here. That's three living cops and a dead body. Unless there's more bodies, I mean. <clears throat> oh, I, uh, I wasn't on sure you weren't. So this guy likes tits, huh? I read in the paper he was fucking his model. She's not even half his age. Genius doesn't age. Yeah. I bet she did it. It's always the girlfriend. Forensics. Sorry to kiss this. I balled them out, but nobody listened. It was like a party when I got here. I even got a hold of someone who wasn't with the department. Oh, the department made a pretty good mess all by itself. I spoke to the neighbor. The one who discovered the body. Mm -hmm. A guy with a girl's name, Allison. Uh, so Mr. Minsky was expected at a gallery event, but didn't show. So they rang and asked... Allison to call in on him. He friendly with the victim. Says he modeled for him. I thought Minsky only painted women. He's got a girl's name. Says he was booked to come around tomorrow at 2 o'clock, so he was expecting to be alive tomorrow. Hey, Clue. He wasn't expecting to be murdered. Good work. Dead, naked celebrity. Paul Goodman. There's a missing penis, too. You're Mr. Sex Murder. They didn't bleed much. I figure the penis was cut off after the heart had stopped beating. The real cause of death was asphyxia. Given the nakedness and penis disfigurement, I'd say sexual asphyxia. Well, I don't see anything to do with the asphyxing. He didn't choke himself. There's external signs of hypoxia that he wasn't smothered or strangled. No defense marks, no bruises, I'm guessing mask or gag. They took the murder weapon away. I always do. Deeping in psychology. Indeed. Well, I'd better head off. Already? Allison said Minsky's expected at a gallery show. It's a perfect chance to canvas the suspects. I'll come back after. I'll be here. Be subtle, have ten uncles for bear witness. 
Blood, semen, hair, tissue, spittle, urine, feces, vomit. There's a reason they invented a mnemonic for that. Uh, make sure you enter that book you picked up in the ledger. Of course. I missed the protocol. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not break chain of evidence. Homicide, Homicide investigation, investigation is a sacred, sacred mission from God. God. We speak for the dead who have no voice. Shut! It's fucking great from down here. <laughs> Should we do one more for fun? I could do this all day. <laughs> I really enjoy the the sort of the, the schlocky quality of the of the films that we are getting to see here. These are these are things that I would unironically watch and, and enjoy. Um, so interesting that his character dies of asphyxia, and then we get like weird ghost footage of him being strangled. It's worth noting a, a, a method of murder that is explicitly ruled out here, but still, you know there are similarities. Anyway, let's go back for it. I'm going to try reversing double speed through it and see if it seeing if it still gives it to us. Also, it's quite a ways back in the scene, so It was around when they were talking about the asphyxiation, right? Yeah, like here. This imagination was lesser than I thought. It wasn't as great as I wanted it to be. So this is a different way of imagining him dead. Hmm. Okay. Um, I have some thoughts. First of all, Minsky 3A, put it in the notebook. Secondly, we're going to go do that again, but we're going to reverse through it at normal speed and see if it still triggers and if the footage is exactly the same. Just to try to get an understanding of the phenomenon that we are seeing here. I say sexual asphyxia. Alright, normal speed. Yeah, seems the same. So it's not... This imagination was lesser than I thought. It's not reversing backward at any... It's not reversing at any particular speed. It's just the act of reversing at all through the footage around the noise that causes the effect. Alright. Uh, pop me back out and back in. But it didn't happen when I did it. No, it did. Okay, shoot. So I want to go. I want to use the go back to the beginning button. And then fast forward. I'm curious what happens if we fast forward through the noise. If, if the footage does the thing. No. Okay. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I don't know what to make of it. So if we click on the character, we get, if we click on this blonde lady, we get Marissa, which is suggestive of these maybe being Marissa's fantasies, or the, the voice of the blonde woman being maybe um, speaking Marissa's thoughts or something. I'm kind of grasping in the dark here, but like, how would I not be, right? Hmm. Oh, I was trying to leave the clip. Hmm, hmm, hmm. All 
a test read for two of everything. This is the third movie. I'm too dangerous for everything. All right, Marissa, you will be reading Heather. Amy, you're reading Isabel. John wrote the part for me, so if you need any tips. Heather is you when you were younger. Maria, you as you are now. Taken to extremes for dramatic effect. She's greeted by the beautiful Isabella, 40s, wearing a white blouse and long dress. She has the vague continental accent that could put her from anywhere. Maria, it's such a pleasure to finally meet you and Isabella Hessenberg. Isabella kisses Heather on both cheeks, squeezing her upper arms approvingly. Heather smiles, slightly uncomfortable. So healthy. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Would you like something to eat? Oh, I'm fine, thanks. I ate on the plane. Well, have a drink. A maid with a tray of champagne flutes steps forward. Isabella passes one to Heather, takes one for herself. Thank you. This place is so beautiful. Did you do all of this yourself? B. Isabella looks at her, eyes narrowed, and Heather thinks she's messed it up already. Then Isabella smiles. Uh, no. <laughs> Ford Hansen did most of it. Do you know him? He just did Calvin Klein's Miami home. I don't know Bort, but uh, I do know Calvin Klein. I have some of his underwear. Isabella laughs politely. <laughs> well, shall I show you around? I would love that. The bodyguard follows with the bag as Isabella shows her two interior Hessenberg residence living room. A massive living room with a white grand piano and a view of the city. Isabella runs her hand along the piano. This is beautiful. Perhaps you can perform for us here later tonight. I'd love to, uh, but my Piano skills are a little rusty. We'll have someone play for you. She's sizing Maria up with her eyes. Andrew was surprised you said yes. He was convinced something like this would be beneath you. Oh, well, there's no shame in doing something for the money. Michelangelo worked on commission. That would make Mr. Hessenberg the Pope? <laughs> Andrew is no Pope. <laughs> and you are no Michelangelo. I mean that as a compliment. All of Michelangelo's women look like men with tits stuck on them. <laughs> and scene. Amy, that was fabulous. Should we uh, go get something to eat and then after mm -hmm. this, see how you do with Maria? So there was there was something in the audio there at the end. It wasn't quite that sound, but it was like a low rumble like that. It was only in the left audio channel. Let's just out of curiosity. Yep, okay, it was the thing. But it was like a softer, okay, so it was a softer version of it, so we get a softer version of the effect. The blonde woman is dressed in, in uh, Marissa's clothes, so yeah, right, exactly what we would think. Hmm. And scene. Amy, that was fabulous. Should we uh, go get something to eat? You need to go. I wish. Should we? Uh, I wish. Yes. So in the moment, it's like a reflection of what. Durek is doing. Hmm. I don't know that I can make anything out of that. It's very curious. <laughs> I have I have that at least. Yep, and forward forward gives us nothing. Okay. Well, This strategy is yielding stuff. No, this we know. This we know. I'm thinking we have most of the clips. Yeah, we have most of the clips that have him in them, maybe. That's why we're getting a lot of repeats. We're rolling. Good to go. Sure. Wait, why don't we make it cute? Follow me. 
This is John Jurek. He's the director of photography. He paints with light. Why don't I go here? Shouldn't I be sat where you are? Oh, no. Careful with her. You're gonna extract a confession out of you. She's very persuasive. You're lucky I can't reach you through this grill. How is filming going? I'm really getting into the character. I think Temptress is a job I can get behind. How have the Italians been treated? <laughs> okay, cut for a second, Mike. I guess we want to clear this area. We're spoiling our fun. Okay, we're starting to get it all over the place now. So that's that's exactly superimposed the footage from this scene, right? Which is interesting because that hasn't happened yet. Although, I mean, like, what if... <laughs> <laughs> what is the footage hidden inside the backwards? I, like, what does it even mean, right? I don't want to ascribe some kind of, like, time-traveling photon nonsense to what is essentially already just fucking magic. All right. Ambrosio interview... What was the other one? The other one was this? Yeah. It's unfortunately... It's a little bit harder to catalog these clips in my arbitrary notebook here. Um, all right. Hmm. So it may just be the case that we're, we're getting a lot of these moments now because these moments represent something about the way Marissa is feeling or the frustrations she's feeling or things that she... But it's stuff that's touched off by Durek a lot. So continuing to follow the Durek thread is just is showing us instances where he's like pushing her buttons or ev evoking her jealousy or <clears throat> I don't know. I do want to keep doing it though. It seems to be yielding. I will now interview the. I'll talk call around. Location scout for Minsky Studio Exterior. Okay, scene 30. Police are pulled up, lights flashing. Goodman standing in the street, wrapped in a dressing gown, his makeup smear on his face. Franny is with him. Have you convinced Carl to wear a dress yet? watches as police officers escort Olga out onto the street and into a waiting cop car. And she comes from here. Walker comes from here. Walker approaches. Jesus fucking Christ, Goodman. Should we go inside? She waits outside. I don't even want to know what the fuck this is. Goodman and Walker walk towards the apartment as Franny gives Walker the finger. Inside. <laughs> I'll talk call around. Yeah. Oh, interesting. It jumped through the gesture rather than his face. Okay, well, where are we now? Hmm. Seen a Fiki car? Yes, sir. And action. Stop her! You run through the dark. A maze of passages. You see a light through the door. A visitor? It's been so long since my angel and I had company. There's no escape. You struggle. I tell you, screams. There's those eyes. That's what they're paying him for. Oh my God. It will be a mercy to escape this world. This 
they did. But the character in the end does get up and, and wander into the chapel. Hmm. It's really interesting that it jumped through the act of kissing. This thing is going to behave unpredictably in ways that are going to be frustrating in really interesting ways, I suspect. Out of curiosity. Okay, well, that's not exactly the same gesture, but fine. 39 apple, take two. Going again. From my mother says, and action. What are these? Oh, those are the pages which mother says I am too young to read. The scripture is God's word. It offers no risk to a young mind. Song of Songs. This is a hymn that glories in man's love of God. Here, let us read together. I have come into my garden, my sister, my bride. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb and my honey. I have drunk my wine and my milk. Here, you eat. Awake, North Wind, and come, South Wind. Blow on my garden that its fragrance may spread everywhere. Let my beloved come into his garden and taste its choice fruits. Eat, Eat French and drink. Drink, drink your fill of love. love. Uh, I'm sorry, are you burned? A little. It is fine. He will heal. I should go. You may rest. I feel a little feverish myself. I have not slept or eaten well from... Worrying about my mother. Yes. Rest yourself. Good night. And cut. Can we go again? I had Marisa in my eye line. Oh, God. I'm sorry. I'm thinking about... Uh, so, so far, we've only had the sound occur. And this is going to sound a little bit silly. We've only had the sound occur in situations where... Both uh, Marissa and John Durick were present, right? Because, you know, anytime that we're on the film set, that's true. Because he's either directing or, or in this first film, he's the, um, the cinematographer. And obviously, no, 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 that's not true. That's not true, actually. Marissa's not present in the chapel scene. So the only common element between all of the scenes of this stuff is well she's not present in the real world in the chapel scene but she was present in the weird footage that we saw Durek is is at all of these places where it happens though i wonder maybe we spend most of next episode trying to jump around through the other characters who are present um and seeing if we can Find a clip that does that thing that doesn't have Durek either in the clip itself or at least in the room when the when the thing is happening. That might be a good a good place to look um, in the future. For the moment, I kind of want to stick to the plan though. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we have this. So it does it does seem like it's trying a little bit to match. Like how his face looks in the moment. Let me like re-angle him a little bit here and see if this starts giving us something a little different. Oh, yeah, there is a moment where he's visible in here. Vaccine. That's definitely Heather. Okay. All right, read for our scene one through nine. We'll just go straight through. Over black. Final check in 20. Group three to the stage. Move your asses. Interior. Backstage corridor. MBA awards. Harry producer opens door into an empty dressing room. Fuck. Closes it. Paper on door reads Maria. 
Back into the corridor and jogs. Stage manager going the other direction, followed by backing dancers and crew. Producer's walkie spits in his ear as he fights through the crowd. This is the biggest night of your life, so I hope you took your vitamins. The entire motherfucking world is watching. Backing singers in bright colors harmonize as they shuffle past. It's the motherfucking music video awards. Producer sees a production assistant, Sue, he recognizes. Motions her over. Maria is MIA. She needs to be mic'd and ready. Go check the second floor, quick. Will's up in 20. On it. Jogs off. Fuck. Exterior, Hollywood Hills mansion, pool, same. The sparkling swimming pool of a luxury Hollywood estate. It's lit up for a party, but only one person is there. Mark, 25, an underwear model type. He lounges at the poolside, eyes closed. Bare feet and long legs step up to the poolside. Mark opens his eyes. Nice. Ready for the show? Hell yes. Inside the show? Can't we just tape it? Are you kidding? I want to watch live. Kicks him off into the pool with a splash. Interior, video music awards, hallway, same. Our production assistant crashes through a stairwell door, spins her head, can't decide on a direction. Walkie spits. Sue. She answers. Go. Ryan says they switch rooms last minute. She's in room 25. She juggles her clipboard, scans it. West B, on the other side of the freaking world. On it. Better run. Will's up in five. The assistant spins and breaks into a run. Shit, shit, shit. Crashes back through the stairwell door. Exterior, Hollywood Hills Mansion, pool, same. Maria and Mark splash up out of the water, laugh, kiss. Maria breaks off. Okay, we need to go inside now. One more kiss. I need to dry my hair. I'm the star of the show. She smoothly dives, glides to the ladder, climbs out, Venus emerging from the pool's mirrored surface. At the top, glances over her shoulder. Chop, chop. Interior, music video awards, West dressing room, same. The back of a woman's head, the same long honey hair as Maria. She's in an intense costume. A male makeup artist touches up her makeup. A heavy knock at the door. It opens to reveal the PA, out of breath. I'm sorry, Maria? The head doesn't turn, but the makeup artist rolls their eyes. Excuse me? Society made doors for a reason. Okay, but Maria's needed on stage, yeah, and we... Well, you maybe should have thought of that before you put us in the round mirror room. Sorry, the what? The last room had round mirrors. Round mirror, round face. Maria only works with square mirrors. He gives the woman's shoulder a squeeze, and she turns. The face looks just like Maria, but... It's not. This is Heather, Maria's double. Heather smiles apologetically before the makeup artist turns her chin back towards him. Fucker, sweetie. You're not going out there until you look like you blew a hoover. There you go. Do you love it? Heather looks at her ultra-glam reflection in the mirror, smiles. The poppy strains of Maria's hit song, Two of Everything, start up as interior, Hollywood Hills mansion, living room, moments later. Mark calls up the stairs, popcorn bowl in hand. It's starting. I'm coming, I'm coming. Maria comes running down the stairs, now sporting a black bobbed wig. She gives Mark a kiss at the bottom of the stairs. He ruffles her wig, smirking. Why the wig? I'm incognito tonight. Wouldn't want anyone to recognize me. She leads the way to the couch and plops down, gesturing for him to sit with her as the sounds of two of us rise. Oh my god, here we go. <sighs> Interior, MVA stage. A spot highlights a bare point on the stage. Other lights hit the point and overlap, turn, create the image of a rose petals on overlaid, turning slowly. The lights move apart and the rose flower unfurls. Then, a spray of petals and smoke and Heather stands in the center of the flower. Crowd applause, she smiles, hair hangs in the air. The music cuts, applause abates, crowd intakes breath. Maria clicks her fingers, loud music drops. She struts forward, dancers appear out of nowhere, fall in step. The two of us. We should have known better. The two of us could be so much better. Interior, Hollywood Hills Mansion, living room. Moments later, song continues on TV. You look hot. Don't you dare. You have the real thing right here. Sure. Never seen Heather naked, though. You want to fuck her? Two Maria's is better than one. Should I ask her? Really? Toy slaps him. Pervert? You can't even tell us apart. You can, too. See this? Insert on TV. Heather and her dancers nail a complex dance routine. Heather hitting a high note as she goes. You and I were meant to get along, but I want to cry when we get it wrong. You and I on the edge of it all. Hold me close, baby, when we start to fall. Back to scene. That's definitely Heather. You have never hit that note live. She turns to him, amused. Fuck you! I'd have to be stupid to pick a double who was a worse singer than me, right? Smart. I should get a fake you, one that's more respectful. Impossible, I'm one of a kind. Babe, 
I could find ten more of you without even leaving this zip code. You are sweet, though, and it would be time-consuming to house train another, so stick around. I love it when you demean me. They kiss passionately. Maria peeks at the TV as applause breaks out. Insert on TV. Fans scream from the audience, holding up signs. We love you, Maria. Queen Maria, etc. On stage, Heather soaks it up. Her eyes shine, elated by the crowd. I love you all! Interior, Hollywood Hills Mansion. Bedroom, morning. Heather's voice echoes over Maria waking up hungover in the lavish master bedroom of her home. She looks to Mark snoring beside her in the disheveled bedside table covered in booze and pills. Groaning, she gets out of bed. All right. That was great. <laughs> interesting it sounds like we have we have the sound like the very soft version of the sound the superimpose version of the sound playing actually through the end of the clip here also i want to say this movie i think i would be less interested in this movie than the other two this one does not seem as fun let's um Oh, see, that's interesting. We're getting superimposed doubles of everybody except for Durek. That was great. <laughs> Durek's the only person who's only in the footage once. The hell does that mean? I mean, whatever's happening is definitely about him. The imagined person. The imagined person is linked to Marissa. But whatever's happening, it's definitely about John Durek. That's really interesting. All right. I think that's probably enough for, uh, for one more episode. Uh, that's going to be where we call it for today. And thank you all so much for watching. When you come back next time, I think, like I said, we're maybe going to hop around a little bit in some of the some of the secondary characters. Maybe a little bit more Carl. Um, maybe the dark-haired actress from Ambrosio. And we still have so much to learn about two of everything. We really don't know anything about that movie. Um, but just, I'm really curious if we can if we can find a scene where the weird things are happening where Durek isn't present. Because if we could, you know, that would suggest something. I don't know what it is, but it would suggest something. Uh, so come back next time for that, and we'll see you then.